Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Graff from Golf.com and the Fully Equipped Podcast and welcome to my build shop. This is where I build all the golf clubs that go into my golf bag and in some cases some other people as well. Now the reason we're here today is to really explain a lot of the factors that go into you know putting golf clubs together and things that people tend to misunderstand. You might be listening to a club today or talking about these, these factors and you might not really understand exactly what they're talking about and that's lie and loft and length and how they measure length. Most people know how to use a ruler, but how a golf club ruler is different from a standard ruler, how shafts go into different club heads. All these things are elements of building a golf club or putting them together that a lot of times can, if you get them wrong, can cause them to fail. Not only that, it's that time of year where a lot of people are considering regripping their golf clubs. It's important to know the right size to look for when you are putting your golf clubs together and how to eliminate variables in your golf shafts from club to club to make sure that every grip feels the same throughout your entire set. Because when you have new grips on your golf clubs, you're going to have more comfort. It's the only connection you have between you and your club. So you want to make sure that it's comfortable, it fits right, and most importantly, which is what we're going to dive into today, they feel the same from club to club. Because although the grips might be the same, the end of the golf shaft might not be the same. And you could get different rates of taper or different sizing through your set, which you don't want. And this way, I'm going to show you how to prevent that. So before we get to that, let's dive into length. We've all used a ruler or a tape measure in the past, and this is essentially the same thing. The only difference being you measure a golf club with a golf specific ruler, which holds the head whether it be a, everything from a wedge all the way to a driver in a very specific place to make sure you're getting the right length relative to the sole, which is how a golf club is measured. You don't just wanna put a golf club against the wall and get your tape measure out to figure out how long it is. There's a lot of factors that could really change the way you measure that golf club if it just sits up against a flat surface. And by using a golf specific ruler, you're gonna get the right length every single time. Most importantly is this end of the device because it holds the golf club in place at a particular point measures to a reference point relative to the shaft axis and that's how you measure length. So you need a specific ruler to do this because it is very important that if you are building clubs that are longer, you're going to get the right measurement every single time. Or if you're measuring a set or you're replacing a golf club that might have broken within your set, that you're matching it to the rest of those golf clubs in the set so you don't have a club that's too long or too short. Another important factor when it comes to building golf clubs is lie and loft. So we're gonna head over to the lie and loft machine to explain how it works and how to diagnose your ball flight if you are missing shots right or left and understanding what that means for adjustments. All right, so here we are at a lie and loft bending and measuring machine. Now there are very high-end specific devices used only for measuring, but lucky for me, this thing does both, which makes it very convenient for checking a golf club or if I have to bend something to the proper spec. The reason Lyangle is so important, let's touch on that before we get on how to actually use the machine, and that is Lyangle affects launch direction. So if a golf club is too upright, a golfer will tend to miss to the left. If a golf club is too flat, they are generally going to miss too far to the right. And the more loft that is on a golf club, the more important it is to make sure that that Lyangle is correct, because at 100 yards with a wedge, because of the loft that's on a golf club, one degree can mean 10 yards left or right of your target if your line is not correct. So it's really important to make sure that you're dialed throughout your entire set to get them to the right spec to make sure that you are hitting your target from a right and left dispersion perspective. Now, as far as the machine is concerned, we've got loft, which is front to back. We've got line goal from side to side. And then we check relative to make sure these grooves have to be parallel to the bottom device. For this being a stock wedge, we are sitting at 63 degrees, which 63 or 64, depending on the wedge, is going to be what you're looking at for stock. And for a 60 degree wedge, we're right on 60 degrees. So we know that for loft, this golf club is to the right spec. And, and then we just got it, if it does need to go flat or upright, which we haven't actually gone through that process yet, we will go through that and, and check it out. Now, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what you will see is when someone is using a bending device, they will bend in one direction and then the other. That's going to get the most accurate results from club to club because this whole thing is about making sure that your golf clubs are consistent. That just clamps on the hosel, you're going to bend, you're going to make sure and check and recenter this the, the club into the clamp, and then from there you'll measure again and, and repeat that process until you're done. That is how Lion Loft works and why it is so important when it comes to your golf clubs, especially your wedges. Now we're going to talk about the only connection you have between you and your golf club, and that is the grip and making sure that you get sizing correct 
from club to club throughout your entire bag. All right, so now it's down to shaft and grip sizing. And when it comes to shafts, there are a couple measurements to keep in mind, tip size and butt size. Now the butt end is the real important part when it comes to grip sizing because there is no standard within the industry. Most shafts are going to be around the 0.600 mark if you are measuring using calipers, but you can see some variation from shaft to shaft, especially when it comes to graphite shafts and different models. There isn't variation from the same shaft throughout the set. You're not really gonna see that. Quality control is good enough now where there, there really is no issue. But the actual sizing can be determined based on the profile of the golf shaft, the weight of the golf shaft, or the stiffness of the golf shaft when it comes to the butt end. So the shaft I have here, you'll notice that there is very little taper towards the end of the golf shaft. And as I said earlier, this is 0.600. You can see sizes up to 0.7 and some that actually go above. And the reason for this is they use that extra width to make the golf shaft stiffer in the handle. And because of that, you might find that you put on a grip that is the exact same grip onto a 600 shaft and a 700 shaft, and one is going to feel way bigger. Now, if you have that shaft in your driver, you might be able to reduce or stretch it a little bit to get some of that taper out of it. But if you're looking to uh, replicate that size on a 600 shaft, you're going to have to use extra wraps of tape to build it up, and you can use calipers to make sure that you are getting the right size. Now, when it comes to tapering, I've got another example here. This is a shaft that has tapering really pretty much in the middle here, but again, that butt section is parallel from right here to probably close to 16 inches down the shaft. So no matter how much length you cut off, that is going to be the same size all the way from the bottom to the top of the grip. So you're gonna get the, the natural taper of that grip feel in your hands. Next up, and this is where a lot of people will find grips feel a little bit smaller, even though they're using the same grip, is in their wedges. And the reason for that is the rate of taper. You'll start to see these steps within the shaft. And as they step down, the grip will start to feel smaller in that bottom hand. Now, one of the ways to, again, help prevent that from happening is measuring the golf shaft, the size, the other shafts that you would like it to compare it to, and then use a little bit of tape to take that taper out all the way down the shaft. So if you are looking for that, cons like that consistent flow from top to bottom of the grip, you can get that by using tape to make sure that everything feels the same from club to club, all the way from your driver, all the way down to your highest lofted wedge. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's our goal to help educate you when it comes to your golf clubs and better understand what goes into putting them together. And as always, thanks for watching.